Hey pre-calc friends, welcome to section 1.3. So now we're going to talk about real visual, visual stuff here today. We're going to talk about taking graphs, taking functions, and messing with them. What's called transformations, like translating, reflecting, and stretching. So here's what's going to happen. You already made some flashcards, hopefully, from the recent homework. But let's actually dig into it and find out why what's happening is happening. So let's first talk about translating. Translating, another word is shifting, which I like too. Just means either you're moving up or down or left or right. All right, we're going to start with just a typical absolute value graph. If you remember, folks, that is our just typical V graph here. Okay, let's see what happens. For number one, notice that I take y equals absolute value of x and I add to on the outside of the function, outside. And before I even talk more, let's just look at the different ways I've changed these. Number two looks like I subtracted two on the outside. Number three, I added two, but on the inside with the x. Notice how that's different than number one. And on number four, I subtracted two from the x on the inside. So it really makes a difference, I guess, whether it happens on the inside or outside. Let's go back to number one, folks. So it looks like I'm adding two on the outside. And if I graphed that, here's what would happen. It would look a little bit like this. Where did it go? it went up two. Okay, that's pretty neat. How about number two? If I take my absolute value graph and now I'm gonna subtract two on the outside and I graph it, he will look like this. So a two subtract on the outside, he moved down two. Number three, now look what I put the two. I'm gonna put the two on the inside, I'm gonna add it. Now this is kind of strange because I would think adding is a positive change. It's with the X. So I would think, oh, okay, a change positive with the x would be to the right, right? And actually it's not. That's what's going to be kind of confusing. Whenever we make changes with the x, we're going to do often what the opposite is of what we think it's going to happen. So this is plus 2. You think it's going to go to the right 2, but believe it or not, if I graphed number 3, it would actually look like this in purple. How strange. It actually moves left 2. So if you feel like a lot of the opposites are happening, what do you think is going to happen to number four, where it looks like I'm subtracting two from the x's? You think maybe it's going to go that way? And I do too, but it's actually going to go the opposite direction. It's just a very strange algebraic thing that happens. He would look like this on the graph. If I do a minus two on the inside, he's actually moving to the right two. Okay, so any kind of shifting, up, down, left, right, here, is what you put on your flashcards, and here's generally what you need to memorize. If I give you y equals f of x, if you see a change on the outside of the function, and it's positive, it moves up. I feel like any y change we like, it's exactly what it looks like. It's a plus k, it goes up k. All right, if it's a minus k, it goes down k. So any change on the outside affects the y values, and it does exactly what we think is gonna happen. Mm, it's whenever it happens to the x's that just gets a little funky town. If I do plus h, you think it's going to go to the right, but he actually goes to the left. Okay, so I feel like with x's, you tend to do the opposite of what you think is going to happen. It looks like I was going to go to the right because it's plus h, right? But you're actually going to the left. Similarly, on over here on the last one, if you see a minus h, you're actually moving to the right. You think it's left, but it's actually moving to the right. So if you see a change on the outside, it's affecting the y, and it's exactly what it looks like. If it's affecting the x on the inside, you do the exact opposite. All right, so shifting, great. How about if we take a graph and we sort of flip it over and reflect it? For example, something like this. If we have a graph and we flip it over here, that's a reflection. Or I can flip it downwards and flip it down this way. So let's see, if I take, here we go, let's take the square root graph which is sort of half of a parabola, he would look at something like this, half of a sideways parabola. Now watch what happens. When I graph number one, notice where I'm putting a negative. I'm multiplying the inside x with a negative. When I do that, that means I'm changing all my x values from positive to negative and negative to positive. So he's gonna flip over this way. All my x's are changed. They were positive over here, and now they become negative because I'm multiplying the x's. Do you notice what axis I just flipped over? Mm-hmm. This is called a y-axis reflection. Notice that you're multiplying the x's, so it's a y-axis. I memorize this as just literally flipping the letter of the axis, 
or flipping the letter of whatever you're multiplying by negative one. I multiplied the x by negative one, so it's a y-axis reflection. So we move over here to number two. Notice the negatives on the outside. And remember, f of x is just like y, right? So this is like writing negative y. Oh, okay, okay. So you see how the negatives on the y, y becomes negative. It's an x-axis reflection. And it would look like this. If the black graph was my original, I'm changing all the y's from positive to negative and vice versa. So it goes down here. Notice how I flip over the x-axis. So again, switch letters in your brains, friends, to help you memorize this. If you're multiplying the y values by negative, it's an x-axis reflection. Going back, for a translating member, if it happens on the outside, it's a y change. It's exactly what it looks like. If it happens on the inside, add or subtract, it's the opposite of what you think. Reflections, it's negatives. When you multiply by negative, you make reflections. Okay, how about stretching and shrinking a graph? You might see in the book, they might use the word, instead of shrinking, they might use the word compressing or compression. I like the word shrinking because it's just a little bit more of a common word. But if you see the word compression, just know it means the same thing. Okay, we're going to show, for example, a sine curve which as we learn trig a little bit later, sine curve is really neat because it's kind of a wave like you have here. There's your original sine curve. Now, if I take the sine curve and I take a two on the outside, it looks like I'm multiplying. So I'm multiplying on the outside, which means down here, I'm multiplying all the y's by two. Remember, any kind of y change that we've seen so far, it does what it looks like it should do. So it looks like it should multiply the y's by two. When you multiply y's, you're changing things vertically, right? Because y is an up and down letter or up and down vertical axis. So when you multiply the y's, you're changing vertically. If you're multiplying by a big number like a 2, it's going to be a stretch. So it would look a little bit like this. Notice that I basically just took the bumps and I just stretched it up and down vertically. That's a multiplication of 2 on the outside. It multiplies the y's, so it's called a vertical stretch. What, what if we take that verticalness and do number four? See on the outside is your one half. So again, that's changing my y values. I am multiplying by half. I'm changing y, so it's still vertical. But notice how you're multiplying by a small number, so it's a shrink. Okay, on the graph, you look something like this. Oh, I'm going to take the black graph. I'm just basically shrinking it vertically. So I kind of smush them like I sat on it. Okay, so any changes on the outside, again, is a y change. It does what we think it's going to do. If we're multiplying over here on number 3 by a big number, it's a stretch. If we're multiplying by a small number, like a small fraction, it'll make a shrink. Okay, anything that happens to the x's, folks, we always do the opposite. Okay, notice here that the x is being changed. Not on the outside with the y, but the x. So right away, because it's with the x, I'm going to say this, horizontal. On number 6... Same thing, happens to the x, horizontal. But now, look what happens. Remember how we said changes with the x is usually the opposite? It looks like I'm multiplying by 2, but I'm actually dividing by 2. Or, I'm multiplying by 1 over 2. So you're doing the opposite operation that it looks like here, folks. I'm not multiplying by 2, I'm dividing by 2. And because I'm multiplying, or I'm dividing by 2, or multiplying by half, it's actually the opposite of what you think. It's a shrink. So multiplying by 2 on the x is actually a shrink. Mm, that's weird. Number 6. Here I'm multiplying by a half. Well, that's what it looks like. But what are you really multiplying by? 2 over 1. Or you're dividing by a half. And because you're dividing by half or multiplying by 2, it is a stretch. Okay, so just take a minute and look at that. When you do the y's over here, number 3 and 4, the changes are exactly what it looks like. If it's a big number on the outside, you're going to be stretching. If it's a small number on the outside, like number 4, it's a shrink. With the x's, here's the weird one. Again, put this in stars. Number 5 and 6 are the tougher ones, too. Any change that happens on the inside, it's the opposite that you think. It looks like a big 2 here on number 5, but it's actually a shrink. It looks like a 1 half, small on 6, but it's actually a stretch. It'll just take a little bit of practice to get used to, and those flashcards will definitely help you out. Your textbook has this beautiful, huge summary of everything we just said for the past 10 minutes. But look how textbooky it looks. Ooh, it's a bit heavy. So can I give you a better summary down here that's just a little bit easier to digest? 
So that was a pretty huge summary. This one's a huger one. That's my word. Okay, so I've said this a couple times, but a good summary to put in your notes. If you see a change here, folks, that's on the outside, anything happens on the outside of f of x, it's going to be affecting the y values. Whether you're adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, if it's happening on the outside, it's a y change, and we like it because it's exactly what it looks like. If you're adding 2, it's going up 2. If you're multiplying by 2, it's stretching by 2. Yeah, but if it happens on the inside, if you see literally the change in with the x, inside is an x change, and we're doing the opposite of what it looks like. If on the inside it says x plus 2, it looks like I'm going to the right 2, but you're actually going to the left. If you're multiplying the x by a big number, it's a horizontal change, but it's not a stretch, it's a shrink. So any change on the inside, we tend to do the opposite. Okay, now just how do you know what the change is? Like when you see a plus or minus, you know that a plus or minus, you're basically adding or subtracting, so it's a shift. You're moving it up or down or left and right. Okay, if you're adding or subtracting, it's a shift. If you see any kind of multiplication, any kind of multiplying by a negative, you put a negative on the outside, like negative f of x, or f of negative x. Any multiplying by negative, that's your reflection. And you're either reflecting by an x-axis or the y-axis. And remember, whatever letter you're multiplying, it's the opposite letter for the axis. That's why, for example, on negative f of x here, you see how we're multiplying the outside, which is the y? This is an x-axis reflection. Over here, because you're multiplying the x, it's a y-axis reflection. So just keep practicing with those flashcards and it'll help. And finally, finally, friends, if you see any kind of just general multiplication by a 2 or a 5 or a 1 half, any kind of multiplication, then it's usually some kind of stretch or shrink. All right. And then any kind of y change, it's exactly what it looks like. Any kind of x change, it's the opposite. Okay. So in the last video with flashcards, we took a look at numbers 1 through 5, and we basically just talked about what all the changes were. So if you want to review that, go back to that video with the flashcards and do that. But I want to give you some brand new ones. In the next video, we're going to do the more visual changes. We're going to take the graph like here on the right. And now how do I do those changes? How do I shift and stretch and reflect? We're going to learn that next time. That's going to be pretty cool, especially if you're more of a visual person. But before we go today, friends, why don't we just try a couple of examples here? Can you take these four examples? Let's try to list what transformations do you see? Take every change that you see from just a normal, plain old vanilla f of x, and what do you see happening in number one, two, three, or four? Why don't you pause the video and just look back at your notes and flashcards and try to do it on your own, and I'll come back and I'll help you when you're done. All right, friends, welcome back. Let's see how you did. Number one. Okay, I'm just going to put like little underlines next to every little change I see. Compared to our f of x friend on the right, I see a 2 is different. We'll figure out what that is. I see a negative here is different. And I see a plus 1 here is different. Okay? So I'll use the colors that I underlined or pointed to help you figure out what it is. All right, the 2 in the front, that's multiplying. That's multiplying, so it's going to be a stretch or a shrink. It's on the outside, so it's a vertical stretch or shrink because it's on the outside, it's affecting the y. Remember, we like the y changes. It's a big number, I'm multiplying by two, so it is gonna be what it looks like. I am gonna do a stretch. So the two on the outside is a vertical stretch, and you're multiplying all the y's by two. This negative here, remember you see multiplying by negative, that's a reflection, but what kind? Okay, what letter are we multiplying? We're multiplying the x's by negative, so it's a y-axis reflection. You're still multiplying the x's by negative, but visually what happens is you make a y-axis reflection. And the last one here, folks, is an addition. You're adding on the outside, so addition makes you think of some kind of translation or shifting, up, down, left, right. It's on the outside of the function, right? So if it's on the outside, that either means you're moving up or down, and because it's a y change, we like it, it's plus one, that means you're going up one. And there you go, there's number one. Number two. Okay, let's take every change here and let's list what it does. 
I see a negative on the outside. I see a 3 inside multiplying the x. And I see a negative 2 subtracting 2 on the outside. All right, shall we go in order? The blue one here, folks, is a negative. You're multiplying by negative. Remember, multiplying by negative is some kind of reflection. Now, it's on the outside. So remember, when you multiply on the outside, it's like you're multiplying y. If you're multiplying the y's by negative, it's an x-axis reflection. All right, how about the green? Green's going to be a little weird. It's multiplying, so that makes me think it's some kind of stretch or shrink. It's on the inside, though. Okay, so if it's on the inside, we know definitely it's some kind of horizontal stretch or shrink. We're just not sure which one. Oh, wait, it's the x's, right? Remember the x's, you think it's opposite? So you think it's going to be a stretch, but no, 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 no. Careful. It's actually going to be a shrink. Because what you're doing is you're actually multiplying all the x's by 1 over 3. So you're timesing by 1 over 3, not 3. The last one, it's on the outside. It's subtraction. So it's going to think about up, down, left, right. It's a y change, so we like it. It's exactly what it looks like. It's a negative 2. It's going down 2. And that's number 2. All right, here comes 3 and 4. Number 3. All right, the first thing I see on the outside, here's a 1 half multiplying on the outside. Here's a plus 2 on the inside. And then here's a minus 1 on the outside. I bet you're probably a pro at this now. Ready? Are you going to do it? 1 half on the outside. Did you get a vertical? It's 1 half. It's a y change. We like it. It's a shrink. Good job. On the inside, here we go. Okay, this has happened on the inside. It's a plus or minus, so I know it's some kind of up, down, left, right. It's on the inside, so even though it looks like it's going plus 2 to the right, it's actually going left 2. And finally, just like we saw in the previous ones, this is on the outside, so it's up or down. It's minus, so it's down 1. All right, your last one here, friends. You're doing a great job. How about number 4? So number 4, we see a negative on the outside. I see a minus 3 on the inside. And I see a plus 1 all the way at the end. Ready? Here we go. The minus, I'm multiplying by negative, so I know it's some kind of reflection. The outside is like multiplying the y's, so this is an x-axis reflection. The green, minus 3, it's inside with the x, so I know it's up, down, left, right, because we're subtracting. It looks like I'm going to left, but remember, it's an x change, so we take the opposite. This is going right 3. And again, the y change we love. It's on the outside. It looks positive, and it's definitely positive. So he's going up one. So there you go, folks. Next time, we're going to learn how to actually graph these using points. But having this basic knowledge is really, really, really vital to help you with that. So keep going with your flashcards to make sure you're good to go. But there's an introduction to section 1.3. Great job, everybody.